So let's move on to the uh, key principles of Kanban. So we've understood why Kanban is really helpful. What is Kanban in the context of software development, how it transitioned from the, uh, from the Toyota manufacturing all the way through to the development and how it really beautifully sits in within the all other agile contexts. And then when it really is relevant and where in that context, right? It, it also beautifully um, fitting into the product development, not just in the, in the, in the product uh, you know, improvement or process engineering, process re-engineering. So it's a, it's a very nice concept and a nice framework to be used in that way as well. So let's have a look at the core um, values and some of the key principles of Kanban. What separates Kanban from the rest of the other agile methods? So again, like typical agile um, methodology where you talk about three pillars of agile methods, right? So it's, it, it doesn't matter whether you are uh, talking Kanban, Scrum, Lean, uh, DDD, FDD, MDD, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is all of these agile methods, when you say agile, they need to have transparency, they need to have the um, inspection, and they need to have adaptation. These are the three uh, pillars, foundation pillars of any agile methodology, which means that you need to be transparent. And, and, and with Kanban, it is very, very, very uh, fundamental because with Flow, you're trying to be transparent, not just your team, but also to your customers and users and stakeholders with the Kanban board. And that's why the Kanban board is really called the visual information radiator. Just like how you radiate in your, in your houses, you've got radiators to generate heat, right? So we've got radiators in my room, for example, running now to give me heat into the room, right? So that's radiator. But then if you really want to radiate the information on a continual basis, visually, you need to use Kanban because Kanban is beautifully uh, you know, uh, constructed tool that would really fit in to deliver that kind of information continuously. So you don't have to call somebody, ask, send 10 emails, where are we, what is the status? You don't have to do that anymore in Agile because everything is up there, either in the walls in the, or in the boards in the form of uh, these white boards or in the form of the, the electronic Kanban boards like Trello, Jira, all of these follow um, transparency as a thing because they're, they're all using the Kanban boards with these structures. What is, how many tickets are in the analysis stage? How many tickets are in the development? How many tickets are in design? How many are developed? How many are de deployed on the live server? With one look, you can quickly, you know, really quickly, clearly see where we are. You don't have to you know, do a lot of rework. You don't have to really be a genius to understand that with, uh, with Kanban. Very, very, very powerful. And then it also brings in the aspect of balance of how you, you try and structure this work. It's not about, you're not trying to do so much work in the, in the to-do that you forget the done. So it's all about how you put a bit of balance in terms of there is some work in the to do, there's some work in the doing, there's some work in the in the, in the done. So that's where you're trying to restrict the, the, the too much of traffic going everywhere. And then obviously collaboration, very, very powerful collaborative tool. Everybody can do it for themselves. So in the team, the team does it in the scrum, for example. <clears throat> The team does it, it's not the manager. It's not the scrum master who updates the, the Kanban boards because the team is working on the tickets. The team is working on the stories and on the real work, whatever work they're doing, the development work, maintenance work or production work, whatever it is. They are the people who best know how much work has been done, how much work is still to be do, is still to be done and how much work is not started yet. Right? So they're the best people to actually um, update the tickets and update the board. So <clears throat> in Scrum or in SAFE or in any of these DSDM or any of these agile methods, it's the way it, it gets structured, the work and how it gets used is beautifully done through Kanban. Very, very powerful again. And needless to say, we discussed this, flow is the very heart of Kanban. It's the, it is the, it is the centerpiece of all of the aspects that we discussed and it's going to be really so, you know, we're going to discuss that in depth in, in, the, in the next session where flow would actually kind of come out and how it would really make it clear visually as to what is, what is really happening, how you can have a better control on that, better planning. And then leadership, obviously leadership is very, very essential because you can't be a leader unless you know what is happening. 
if you do not know, if you, if you have to ask somebody to tell me what is the status, that, it, that means that you're not having a better control. Whereas with Kanban, the Kanban boards and all these things that we have discussed, it's clear anybody with one look, they can pretty much have a clear idea of what is happening, what's going to happen and how much has been done, right? So that's the beauty of this very simple technique, very simple board, but it has so much of uh, practicality. And then customer focus, obviously, yeah, you're really, it's not just about technology, it's not about this, it's about the work to be done. So your work, you're not talking about, oh, I need to create a table, I need to have five fields to it. You're not really talking about all those things. What is important to the customer is basically this. For example, if, even if it's a technical work, you're not really giving too much detail into that where uh, you get lost with the detail and you need to actually go 30,000, dig yourself the 30,000 valley and abyss and then go into that, no. You really are talking about information which makes sense looking at it. So your, the, the item, the work item or the post-it note or the line, the item that you put on the board is very clear, simple, and just you know, talks about the task. It doesn't talk about extraneous information which is not, use, not useful at all. So that's the, again, very important for us to understand because you can't just put in loads and loads of information, put thousands of tickets up there nobody's going to benefit. What is important is just use a, just, just enough information is what we call just enough information, just enough detail, just enough kind of um, sharing is enough for us to kind of manage and plan and control this process. It, it helps with better understanding and, and you've got an agreement between the stakeholders, you can negotiate better and you also have a respect. Each, again, respect comes from the transparency as we discussed earlier as well. So mutual respect, again, huge, because you're not really trying to put down anybody. Everybody is doing it. Everybody's trying to own the work. Everybody's trying to demonstrate the progress of the work to others. So there's always a sense of mutual respect. So in terms of the key principles coming to this, so we've done, having understood the values, the core values of Kanban, there's some key principles that, uh, that drive Kanban, which again are totally different from Scrum. So let's not you know, mix these two up. And that's why I wanted to actually share these with you because uh, the way Scrum operates is totally different from the way Kanban operates. It's a totally different method, so to say, if you want to call it as a method. First and foremost is limit work in progress. So in Scrum, you've got, for example, in a Scrum backlog, maybe we sprint backlog, we talked about how 100 items in the product backlog could actually be kind of restricted to, let's say, 10 items that go into the sprint backlog, and the team can actually kind of work on that. Again, within that 10 items, you can actually get to see that three of them could be assigned to one person, Dave, and the third person could be assigned to Sham, for example, and, and, uh, and another rest four could actually be assigned to Sarah. So these three people are working on that. So with Kanban, you can actually get to see how much of work that is assigned to Dave had been done and how much of it is still pending. So you can actually get to see that, but the Important thing there is trying to limit the work in progress. You're not trying to do so many things at the same time. What is the work in progress is very limited. You're trying to actually kind of keep it to the minimum. So that means that you're trying to actually take one thing at a time, for example. You're not trying to take 100 things and destroying everything and spreading your legs everywhere. You want to actually have one thing at one point of time, right? The, the, there is also the principle of OPOT. I'm not sure if you have heard about it. It's called one person, one task, and one time. That means one person, one task, and one at one, po one point of time. So it's not like 10 different things. I can still do that, but then what is the point? What's the productivity there? It all gets messy. So it's always good to actually kind of plan. It's not just the manager asking, assigning things to you, but once they're assigned, you would then again prioritize and do the work in such a way that at any point of time, you're trying to reduce minimize the work in progress. That's the fundamental construct of a Kanban thing. Again, focus on the flow. That's the very, very um, you know, critical aspect of Kanban because flow is important. You need to execute the work. You need to get the work done. How can you work that get the work done is basically driven by seeing where the, what is the work, overall piece of work, what is the scope of work, and then where each of that elements of work is there. So sizing of work is done. Right, And then once the sizing is done, you know, okay, it has got 10 tasks. And then once you've got 10 tasks, then you need, to, you need to see where each of those 10 tasks are. So you need to see when can you say that is done. So there is a, there's an aspect of done or complete, 
which is the which is equal to the definition of done in our discussion we did dod so you need to know that and then you actually say okay if it is to be done you need to go through these different stages or different uh, phases different uh, statuses for example so a story goes through for example in the context of agile development it goes through a flow of for example draft once a story is drafted it's then finalized and then refined and then communicated and specified to the team and then it goes through to be for example um, prioritized estimated right all of these are the different stages of a story it's estimated it's prioritized and then it gets assigned to the backlog and then it get once it is there it actually goes through the anal analysis stage design development and finally deployment so you can actually get to see the various as aspects of how a story could actually go through in, in in the development aspect and then make process policies explicit you're trying to um, really have explicit rules and policies explicitly you're trying to say that this is when it it can be considered as done so you're not trying to hide anything you're not trying to assume something as you say um, assume is making an ass out of you and me right so instead of making assumptions instead of trying to assume and then you know applying something you're trying to even if you've got some assumptions validate them making sure that you specify the assumption these are the assumptions i made you validate them you put them explicitly then you're not trying to you know do anything there to, which is which is hidden so when you're trying to make something rules clear policies clear and procedures explicit then everybody you're trying to open up and making it transparent everybody buys into that everybody works according to that and then implement feedback loops remember the pdca we wouldn't have to we discuss that at length right so the case in continuous development continuous improvement and continuous integration and continuous deployment that's the essence of any agile method so you need to implement the feedback continuously in loops and improve again this is the kaizen we talk about kaizen later is the kaizen rule of continuous improvement and then you need to visually you know represent the work you can visualize the work in a better way with kanban so that's the heart of